Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be covering four commodities, doing technical analysis review on them to give an unbiased approach to where we see the charts doing the bullish and the bearish scenarios. We're going to be looking at nat crude, natural gas, gold, and silver. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first we're going to start with crude. Crude right now is forming a bait, almost an ascending triangle on the daily chart where you have the upper line here the top resistance here so we're kind of bouncing up and down between these levels could come up bounce down below could go up we could also break higher because russia did just announce that they're going to be reducing oil exports by 500,000 barrels per day so definitely something to be on the lookout for there so there is definitely some upward global demand that could be pushing a crude higher and also that'd be very poor for inflation personally i think that crude has a 50 50 chance to break out we've been kind of bouncing in this region here but i'm not going to tell the chart what it's going to do i'm going to let the chart tell me what it's going to do if crude breaks above the 82 dollar level definitely be going bullish if we break below the 73 dollar level right now definitely be looking bearish it is as simple as that and we could find support around this area of 65 dollars and 84 cents which actually is a very crucial zone because it is where our 200 day moving average is again we've talked about this on the channel this is your key level of support it would also be coinciding with if we were to break down lower this area that we had a previous bounce at here of 66 dollars and 15 cents allowing this to get a little bit higher as we come down to it definitely something i'd be looking for maybe a double bottom on crude if we go there i've always looked to pick up crude when it has these massive falls and also opec never wants barrel of crude to go below the 70 dollar point they have openly stated this they've openly said they were going to move cut production every time crude fell they said we're going to cut production russia is also a part of opec so as a whole you have a lot of countries that do not want to see oil below 70 if it gets below that point comes down to the 65 dollar level and holds keyword holds we don't just go mad buying because it's near a point of support we want to see confirmation of that support now if we have a wicking opportunity to for crude i definitely be looking to pick up crude back around this level of consolidation around the 60 dollar point which was this big consolidation before it ripped up and basically ate everyone's shorts for breakfast that be possibly another opportunity to buy crude remember when crude was negative and a lot of people were saying oh like this is bearish and then look what happened afterwards i think 60 dollars now with the situation that the world is in is definitely an area that i'd be looking to buy there's a weekly demand zone there so with crude there's two scenarios you break above 82 bullish you break below 73 bearish as simple as i can make it and then we look at the weekly to see if there's anything that stands out you do have possibly a bear flag forming on the weekly flag here channel break below so if we have this bull flag here if it breaks you'd be looking at crude at approximately the 60 dollar mark going back to that zone that we were talking about so if we break bearish on this ascending triangle i definitely be not looking for the 66 dollar bounce i'd be cautious about it but then targeting my mass buy point at 60 dollars that would be pretty bearish for crude and also would help the fight on inflation the markets would cheer it inflation would come down until we start getting those negative earnings reports from the market as we saw in this quarter i think it's going to get significantly worse link down in the description below to our weekend deep dive where we talk a lot about the inflation implications for the market the federal reserve and all that so next we're going to go to silver and gold first we're going to start off with the shiny metal silver so silver on the weekly is pretty bearish and also the daily you did have some consolidation this invalidates being a bear flag because you are going down sideways rather than consolidating upwards we could find support around this 21 dollar 72 cents area however you could be forming if you break these smas and come down to the 200 daily where i do believe you could get a bounce but there's a lot of convolution here of all these smas so really it's like you could have we break one and bounce to the next and people hold and then it can get very very dicey here i would honestly like to see silver not form a head and shoulders here where you come down bounce off come back down again which is possible in this scenario i would like to see silver get 
break some of these SMAs, come back, retest the SMAs again and keep expanding higher. Pretty simple buying opportunity for me would be once you clear $22.52 to confirm you're bullish on silver. If you wanna take the risk of buying in this area where we possibly have the head and shoulders. So overall with silver, it is kind of a maybe wait and see scenario. I definitely be looking at that $20 and $21 levels as a key point because you did have consolidation there. You found buyers there. So the expectation is you're gonna find buyers there again. You could bounce right off this 50 weekly that you broke above. I would like to see some digestion in that level because it would then invalidate possibly the head and shoulders. And once you trade above this big level of $24, I'd definitely be super bullish on silver. However, we need to let time take its course to allow us to see what we could be seeing in the future. And for those that are wondering why we rejected off this point, it was a pretty clear cut trend line being formed here for silver, come down, retest, and then push back higher. Once we break this level, it's pretty much a blue sky breakout to $26 and $28 for silver. That will be the next two resistance points that I see on the chart from a weekly perspective. And another bullish thing for the bulls out there, you could be forming a cup and handle. Here is your cup, here is your handle, and you could have a very, very big expansion if we measure from swing point low to top of the candle. And then this is where your base was formed here. So we take that, put it up to where we possibly could be bottoming. Silver's price target of $20.77 per ounce, definitely bullish. And then once we head past there, you could be heading towards a big breakout in silver afterwards. So there's bullish momentum. I want to see what it does because we broke above these moving averages now. I want to see what it does once we come back into this area. The best scenario for silver would be to bounce off at 50 weekly and continue higher because then you never put the possibility of that head and shoulders there. You then validate the cup and, cup and handle. Very interesting opportunity at that point. Next, we're gonna to go to the Lux Algo for silver. If we look at silver and what Lux Algo is telling us, we did have a ascending wedge pattern on silver that we broke down, targeting that $20.05. If it completes, your MACD is pretty diverged from one another on the daily. You are starting to curl to one another and you are heavily into oversell territory with RSI squeezing together. So again, that 50 weekly SMA bounce is definitely a very, very high probability move. However, we could continue downward to this $21.20 or all the way down to $20.80, which would be that 200 day moving average. It really depends on where we bounce. If we look at the weekly, same story, you have the R MACD and RSI. What's concerning is RSI is downward, MACD is there. So you could see continuation all the way down to the $17.96 level. If you go down there, I do believe silver would start to become very bearish. You'd be below all the moving averages. You invalidate the cup and handle, possibly forming a head and shoulders pattern where, so we would have to see what silver does once we head into those SMAs. There is more bearishness if you break below the 200 daily because you have no support above you and you could be heading to the $17 region which would cancel out the bull run that silver had and a lot of its momentum. You could be almost flagging out in this region here forming a, a, bit, a bull flag but more likely a cup and handle like we mentioned. So overall pretty bullish on silver. Next we're going to go to gold. So gold recently bounced off of its 50 day moving average right here. That's definitely something that we wanted to be on the lookout for. You had this massive run up, came back down to support, found support. So it's definitely an area that we want to now hold. We don't want to break below it. If we break below it, possibly looking at the $1,800 level as support. If we hold this, we could be heading up higher, retesting this level of 1927 or 1950. We did complete a pattern here. We did have the inverted head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So if we draw a line of where that was, bottom to top, extend up, we completed the pattern. So now we no longer have that going for us, let's say, but we did have a nice bullish run and you could see gold expanding further. Definitely bullish right now. If you 
break below the 50 weekly moving average, then I'd be looking bearish. That would also pull down silver because they are correlated. One follows the other. Now let's take a look at where we could possibly have a harmonic pattern forming on gold. So if we go from swing point low, swing point high here, that would complete gold all the way to $2,093. That's definitely severely bullish and just a more conservative A to B pattern here. That would complete around the 2036 level, so above the 2000 level overall. That would put gold near its all-time high, and just to be on the lookout at a key resistance level, I'd definitely be looking out for 2000 almost, and the 2050 level, which could form a double top on gold, we do have to be careful, or if you get above 2050, it's blue sky breakout, you keep going up higher. And just looking at this chart right here, this I'm not saying this is like that, but this could be one of the biggest cup and handles in history to ever form. You have your cup, you then have your handle forming here, and if this pattern were to complete, this is just hypothetical, guys. This is really, really, really a very theoretical pattern that I'm drawing out here. Don't trade off of this. That would put gold right at 22.80 for the price. So that would bring it back to new all-time highs and some insane rally. I definitely am bullish on gold, seeing how it's forming this possible cup and handle. You have the harmonics going for you. You're bouncing off the 50. There's not a lot of bearish scenario being formed here. Definitely a bullish expansion. You did have a massive run up. So this pullback here is not a very big surprise. You were very extended from your 50. You retested it. I would like to see it actually digest, allowing silver to reconsolidate a little bit and both of the metals running together. If silver bounces off its 50 weekly, gold holds around this level, they both continue higher. Overall, for these two metals, it'd be a very bullish scenario and it would continue that bull run higher and higher. Resistance for gold, I would say like 1950 for now, you clear 1950, pretty much blue skies ahead. So last but not least, we're gonna go over natural gas. So natural gas has been an absolute bonkers trade where it just does not want to come back to life. A lot of people have been getting into this and basically like, oh, buy the bottom, buy the bottom, buy the bottom. Really has thrown a lot of people into a lot of pain and misery. You're below the 200 weekly. You know my stance on that. However, you are starting to peak above this nine daily moving average. If you close a whole candle above it, that could be an interesting swing trade. The rule is you close one whole candle above it, then you basically ride it up until it breaks down below. I could see because of how much selling pressure and you have decreasing volume with decreasing price, which could create a snapback. You are super extended from the selling pressure, so it's bound to have a nice short squeeze. I'm not saying it has to, but if the volume starts to increase in the opposite direction, we have a nice bullish run, I could see natural gas coming to $3.77, or if we go to UNG, which a lot of people trace, I would say coming back to this $13.65 level, squeezing out a lot of the shorts out, you did have what in my opinion is a volume capitulation kind of forming the bottom right here. Massive amount of volume coming in. It could be something interesting. Also, you have the Freeport facility coming back online trying to pump LNG. So you could be decreasing the natural gas supplies. And remember, the natural gas trades out base a lot of weather because it drives demand. So we have to see how these weekly reports come out of the draws and the builds. However, I think this this sell-off has been extremely pushed downwards. I do believe you're going to have a nice relief rally, take profit from it. I'm currently in natural gas at $9.50. I'm a little underwater on it, full disclosure, but I do believe that we're going to have a nice little rally to maybe $11 or $13 around that point. I'd probably be taking profit around $11. I'm in it for the quick. So if we get into this point right here and we keep pushing up higher, it definitely be an interesting ride up. I do think we found maybe a temporary bottom here and we could continue higher all to all in due time to see. However, we have to point out one massive thing on natural gas. You have a head and shoulders pattern here, which completes on UNG. I think it's in the $4 region, if I'm not mistaken, actually basically going bankrupt or natural gas going super negative. So 
I definitely think that that's not going to complete because that would basically mean natural gas would be free, similar to how oil was. If we look at that gas and do the same pattern real quick, that would complete same at the super low level. That's why I really don't feel like this pattern is a valid pattern. I think you had massive head and shoulders because you had this massive demand spike, but then you basically sold off and anything that sells off this hard usually has some relief back down. I do think you are gonna sell off, come back up, find resistance and come lower. However, you need to kind of relieve this short squeeze as, or shorting of natural gas to then possibly rip it up higher. You could have a short squeeze since everyone is in a crowded trade, everyone's shorting natural gas. As people are trying to buy in, they're shorting it even more. So I think they're starting to find an exhaustion around this point, which we could squeeze them out hard, push them up to this 200 weekly. And now if we get above the 200 weekly, boy, is that gonna be a blue sky ahead type breakout where we could see a massive short squeeze similar to like AMC or it's all possible. However, I'm not here for the long-term trade. I'm here for the short-term get in, get out. I hope you guys like this type of content. Link down below to the Lux Algo along with our weekend deep dive that we did this last weekend. If you're interested in that, any ticker requests or even commodity requests to review, throw down below. We'll love to get to that. Tell us what you like about the content, dislike about the content, and hope you have a wonderful day.